welcome to this series of conversations that uh, Caroline Bourgeois and myself, Carlos Osvaldo, we conceived as a way to explore the actuality of Bruce Nauman's work. What uh, was interesting to us when we were thinking about the exhibition in Punta de la Dogana is how present the work is for artists um, across um, disciplines, truly, um, and how much of a starting point or a reference uh, Bruce's work um, is for them when uh, thinking about their own practice. Um, usually an archive is something that relates to the past, to a memory, uh, but uh, the work of Bruce uh, is so much about being present, about the viewer being present to herself or himself in front of the work, um, and, and the artist being in the work as presence. And so we felt that rather than rehearsing uh, an archive as something that exists in the past, we should look at the presence of the work in today's practices and think of it as a resource to be used for the future. Um, so again, uh, this series of conversations will constitute a library um, that could uh, hopefully be uh, an anticipation of the show to come in Venice. So, um, um, in this particular case, uh, thank you, Lenio, for being here, and I leave it to Caroline to introduce you. So, Lenio Caclea, she's a dancer, performer, writer with a very specific uh, way to work, uh, being quite away from any kind of network or she don't even have a phone uh, and it's based on her experience with reality depending on where she could go and a way to transform those reality which could concern a very large kind of people including people in the suburbs in different realities it's transformed in a dance uh, on her own or sometimes with other people you may want to add something, but we thought that it would be very interesting to um, ask you about Bruce Nauman because in the show that we share with you, there's the, the performance aspect, the sound aspect, and the studio. Mm -hmm. And for that, uh, we ask you which work you would like to speak more specifically uh, about Bruce Nauman, and you choose Live Taped Video Corridor from 1970. There are many works of uh, of Nauman that I like. One of the pieces of, of Bruce that is part of your exhibition and that I, I find very powerful is the, the video for beginners, yeah. Variations for Thumb and Finger. When I look at this work, it reminds me of the first, uh, the first impressions I had of Nauman's work and how why it was so striking to me, why it was a strong experience to get to know his work. And um, the reason why is that, um, and we see, I think we see it in this, in this work for beginners, is that he directly works not with the body, what with, not, with the, not with the infinite potentials of a body, but with the limits and the restrictions that a body imposes us. And um, what's very interesting, what I find very interesting in this, in this video work for beginners, is that he doesn't look at variation as um, an aesthetic experience of a re or a renewal uh, of a language, or even a joyful, not necessarily a joyful way of experiencing one's being in one's body. But he exposes the very simple restrictions that having 10, fi ten fingers uh, impose to us. And generally speaking, whenever I see his works, especially the ones that uh, implicate uh, the presence of a body or that are uh, practical exercises or, or even spiritual ex ex exercises, I have the impression, I have the strong sense of the sensation of claustrophobia in, in, one, in, in having a body. And this is a very strong physical effect that I have when I see his work. 
And this is one of the reasons that has been um, someone that uh, structured or pushed my limits of thinking of how how we can expose body representations and how can we use the body in the context of representation, be it stage or or studio. I have a couple of uh, of questions, uh, you know, related to that. And well, first, it's a kind of a narrative question. I'm curious. You you refer to a work that is a relatively recent work, and I would be curious to know about your history with that work specifically, with the work of Nauman. Uh, when did you first encounter it, and what were your thoughts? If there was any kind of preconception about Bruce or not, and the first work of Bruce that I saw was Live Tape Performance Corridor. And since Caroline invited me to these sessions, I can't remember when I encountered encar- I- I the work. I think it might be in the States. I think it might be in New York. It might be at the Whitney, but whether it was exposed and in which context, I, I really can't remember. I remember that I was watching the corridor and it seemed like, uh, it seemed like let's say... Uh, um, a minimal, a minimal um, work that uh, that had similarities with other minimal works I had seen. And at some point, I realized that I'll have to walk backwards. And so I start walking backwards in the corridor. And the sensation is so strong that I realize that I'm not, I'm not in what I thought. I'm not in my preconception of a minimal, of a minimal sculpture. And this was very strong. And I wanted to ask you, because for me it's very strong in Nauman's work, a belief to use the body to find another language or something different than the language we know. A utopia of the body, in a way. My sensation when I... My sensation in uh, most of the works that I see is there is an, an ambiguity. The way I receive it is that... I feel an ambiguity between utopian or dystopian representations yes. of, of the body. Um, what is very interesting to me, coming from the kind of background I come, so uh, really a very rigorous academic training as a dancer, where exercise, quotidian exercises, as, are the way for you to extend your possibilities, both as a dancer, performer, and a human being. And being confronted with the kind of physical or spiritual ex- short exercises that Nauman does in his studio, which bring uh, the body to the very basic to very basic uh, states. There's also a very specific way uh, in his work to insist uh, to go and come back and come back. Uh, each time it becomes something else. But you spoke about the hands. He did a few works about the hands. We, we tried to show the same uh, process with the studio in the future show. Yeah. And it echoes to me the way you have to practice and to do it again and again and again. Yeah. And as one point, uh, that's why we're thinking of Beckett too, when you do again and again and again, there's uh, something very easy so suddenly. I don't know if you have an echo on that working. Let's say that re- repetition is um, is uh, you know the fundamental principle yeah. in dancing. <laughs> and what happens is that also um, when we learn how to dance, there is in this uh, in the in our expectations we put lots of expectations in this repetition, and this repetition becomes. You know, we want to transcend. We want to want to become something else. And becoming a dancer sometimes might have this sensation of transcendence, even if it's absolutely not the case. What's very really, really interesting with the uh, with the repetition of actions in Nauman is that I feel that he doesn't promote the illusion of this transcendence. It is a very down to earth. Uh, you know, it is the necessary repetition to just keep on going. Maybe this is also why I feel affinity with uh, with now. And I also, in my work, don't work with the illusion of transcendence, uh, but but with uh, just being the down to earth everyday practice. And this uh, uh, claustrophobic feeling, you, you said that uh, now, and I think that many people refer to 
to the work, you know, in that sense. How do you uh, feel it, it is, it, rec- it reconciles or doesn't reconcile with, with the presence, with the embodiment, with being in the body? When I was listening to you describe the work, I mean, this uh, confrontation with the limits of the body, but at the same time, this perception of enclosure or claustrophobia, it almost seems to uh, make you feel that at the same time that the viewer is confronted with the limits of Bruce's body or his or her own body, there's almost like a, a disembodied perceiver that it's beyond that and watching over. And so it, it points out to this almost like a, an extreme um, disassociation between a sort of conscious, aware, perceiving mind and the reality of the body. Is that what you refer to? Nauman is not is not a dancer, so his his limits. Uh, you know, he's an he's an artist. He's probably not someone that we don't know if he physically practices or not. The, the way we live our bodies is not uh, is not an everyday uh, uh, celebration. We get old. We don't look as we want to look. Or you know, when I look at his at his works, he's not celebrating it. And many of the things that you say, you know, make me think, I mean, as, uh, as you're talking and, and trying to think about what could have been Bruce's references, you know, we spoke a little, I mentioned Cunningham, Hudson Theater as well, you know, I think that, you know, we know that he worked together with Meredith Monk and, you know, uh, minimalism, early minimalism, both in dance, you know, and and music, you know, they were some of his peers, you know, so... A lot of the thinking behind the use of the body as a material might have originally been related to his contemporaries. I'm wondering, I mean, it's just a question out of curiosity, if when you when you look at the work, you see the work as historical or you see the work as saying something about today or, or both? Definitely both. Uh, when I see, when I see historic when I see his works from the 60s and 70s, I can't not think of Yvonne Reiner, for example, a, a bit more than Cunningham, uh, in the sense that um, uh, he, he also exposes the political frame of an action. So in, in that sense, uh, I don't know if Nauman knew, knew Reiner or Reiner knew Nauman, uh, but uh, I can't not see affinities in the way they deal with the body. Also, with the courage Yvonne and the and the and the vision Yvonne had at the time of uh, and others of her others of her peers to work with uh, with non dancers and so to expose movement as performed by people who are not trained. Uh, and so there, you know, there's no there's nothing to see in terms of uh, formal value. Uh, so it's looking at movement as a process of subjective of how who we are, uh, and more than uh, the value that it's uh, projected on these movements. So in that sense, I definitely see the the artistic uh, frame and social frame of the times. And as Caroline said, with uh, with the restrictions, you know, today with the, with COVID, we're going through a period not ambivalent but uh, not contradictory but paradoxical, which is that we leave restriction as a form of, of, uh, of liberty that will allow us, allow us to live in a, in a common, in a society altogether healthy and safe. But this goes through the restrictions that are uh, applied to us, staying home, no social gatherings, not, not meeting others. And I feel that this type of restrictions, the restriction of liberty, of living in small spaces, of not being in contact with others, or at least not physically, are also questions he deals with in his work. Uh, so in that sense, it's not about trying to make it actual. It's, it, you know, it is. I, I, I cannot not project when I'm seeing his work in the corridors. I cannot, pro- I cannot not project how we live in our small domestic spaces, uh, awaiting for the confinement measures to uh, uh, to allow us to go out. I think it's beautiful what you said. I mean, the, the the only question that I would have is, I see that, you know, this invitation has 
put you in the position of looking at the work and and which is beautiful and i wonder if there are things that you feel oh my god i'm going to use this is is you feel that there are things in the work that you can use basically things that he did in his works that i could use mm. i've already have <laughs> <laughs> I already have. It's it's all translated uh, somewhere there. And of course, it's impossible to cut down back to pieces. But mm-hmm. I remember that uh, when I started choreographing, seeing him in, um, constructing these uh, simple practices was fundamental in me uh, thinking of movement uh, outside of uh, uh, a system of value or of composition and bringing it back to how do these exercises affect us? What do they produce? How can we make it, you know, how, what is the, the feedback between a task that we do and what it, it produces on, on us? And you know, in all the contraposto, Caroline, that you can see, you know, the, the colostomy back, the colostomy back, you know, because he was being treated for cancer. And it's also this, I, this thing that he is so private at so many levels and with his own image. But then when he puts himself in the work, it's almost, you know, it's total exposure. I mean, he doesn't hide anything, as you say. Mm-hmm. And it's 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 almost like the brutal exposure of himself, mm-hmm. you know? And that's also kind of shocking, you know, that that suddenly then you have this old man, you know, uh, walking barefoot and with a colostomy bag. It's almost shocking, yeah. It's interesting that you talk about it intimacy because it is true that he has the courage to look at himself with um, with no narcissism. That's very yeah. Real. yeah. And that's that's all we ask. That's yeah. That's one. Of what's that's that's one of the best things we can get in life in general. And it's interesting that you talk about intimacy because uh, there is no doubt that myself, but also my, my peers, my, my generation, uh, questions of intimacy are, are very central in our work. And we don't treat them the same way because our way you, we work with representation in a different way with different type of mediums or, or tools. But, um, but, he also treats it. It's central. This is political in my point of view. Exactly. Very political. There's so much ego. I mean, I don't need to speak to you, Carlos, about that with the yeah. Trump. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they sort of inflated, you know. I mean, but I think it's also a problem, uh, a widespread problem, you know, this... this uh, sort of stage in which we are, in which everybody feels that it's that it's a subject, that we are subjects, but we are at the same time completely devoid of subjectivity, you know, that we can uh, uh, obtain, you know, we basically we gain agency, agency through projecting an idealized version of our own image, right? And we become so attached to that idealization. And I think that he definitely breaks that. And it's painful, you know, I think that, you know, looking at him, it's painful and possibly there is a, a mirror quality. I mean, I think it makes, it's painful because it, it is, uh, you know, this this um, this uh, gaze without narcissism, it's terrifying at the time and more, more even more so today. Mm-hmm. And it's very, it's very interesting because um, um, he manages, uh, he manages though, coming from the generation he comes, he manages to, I don't see, I don't see the male gaze yeah. in his work. And, or at least I don't see the kind of male gaze we don't, I don't want to be imposed to as a female. And that's quite something. Uh, for but someone don't, who, don't you think also in some, in some way, you know, um, this idea of being brutally honest is uh, kind of a very uh, male thing from a cert- from a certain generation. You know, this idea of being completely honest and very and completely straightforward. I mean, it's also and the sort of there, there is a, uh, a heroic 
quality of it. I think there's definitely the courage of admitting that he's fragile and incomplete mm. and that he's mm. getting older like all of us. Mm. Um, and we could call that heroic. Why not? Although, of course, I mean, the, typically ma- the typical male position would be yeah. not to expose vulnerability, right? Uh, but yeah. he, he combines that. He's completely, in a way, brutally upfront, you know, but at the same time, utterly vulnerable. And I think that the other quality, which I think you refer to, is the fact that, you know, it, there, something happens when you look at the work, but the work has this quality of staying with you, and something even stronger happens when you think about the work, right? It's almost like the work forces you to ruminate upon it and to, to, to live with it, you know, even even beyond your exposure to the work, right? Definitely, definitely. I always look at my body when I go to see Nauman's work. Mm. You know, I'm like, I look at my fingers when I see him uh, do what he does or, or I look at, at, my, at my personal space when I see him uh, allowing, allowing us to visit his studio. I have a physical sensation in most of his works. Yeah. And, uh, and this inscribes itself and stays with me. It's not, uh, I never feel I have to understand it. And that doesn't mean that I don't think about it or, the, or there's nothing to think about it, to think about the work. But I remember that as, you know, as a young choreographer, uh, a bit familiar with contemporary art, but mostly occupied with questions of uh, of history of dance uh, and performance. I remember that his work had uh, was to- talking straight through, mm-hmm. um, and I think it's it's related to this um, uh, to the physical effect I, I, I had when uh, when experiencing it. You know, when we organized the show in Venice, the show was distributed in three locations. And in my mind, I imagine that you would walk from one to the other because it's the most efficient way to move around in Venice. And I imagine that by walking from one to the other, you would actually experience the city itself as related to the work. And somebody described that as a sort of a megalomaniac assumption <laughs> from the side of the curator. But for me, you know, working on the installation, it was impossible not to. You know, you would get into those narrow cor- alleys of Venice. Bruce likes this saying, you know, that it, 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 it's solvitur ambulando, which is. It, it is solved by walking, which I believe it originally comes from, um, I think it was um, Diogenes who was participating in a conversation or a discussion uh, about the, um, the nature of movement. There was philosophers that, you know, the sophists who were negating basically the possibility of movement, you know, theoretically. Mm-hmm. And then he simply stood up and walked and said, it is solved by walking. You know? uh-huh. So the physical act of walking is the demonstration. It's something that goes beyond the, lang- the argumentative language and presents it with a reality, with, you know, or realization that transcends, you know, um, verbal expression. <laughs> 